Hello YouTube. I hope you enjoy this video. Today we're going to discuss Iron Gall ink. And we're going to compare Iron Gall ink with fountain pen ink using vintage dip pens on modern paper. I'll also speak a little bit about Iron Gall ink, a slight amount about its history and how you make it, uh, though I won't spend a ton of time on that subject. Uh, maybe about a third of the video. Probably half, I don't know, we'll see. Alright, so I've not used this ink before, um, except for in my testing for this video. This is a sample of Stipula's Black uh, ink that I ordered from iSellPens.com. Uh, and this is a bottle of Iron Gall ink that I made back in February. So what is Iron Gall ink? Well, Iron Gall ink is an old ink. It's been around for centuries. Uh, historians believe that we began using iron gall ink uh, back in the late 17th century. However, there are many who believe that uh, we were using iron gall ink before that, uh, as early as uh, as early early as the Renaissance. Iron gall ink is made in its simplest form of three components: galls, which come from oak trees; uh, iron sulfate, which um, is an iron salt. You can get that today in a very easily and inexpensively from a hardware store by the name of Copperas, which is a fertilizer sold. C-O-P-P-E-R-A-S. Sounds like there's copper in it, but I do not believe there is any copper in it. Water and gum arabic. So the four ingredients are gall nuts, iron sulfate, water, and gum arabic. I wish I had kept some of the galls. I didn't think about it at the time. I didn't realize I'd be making this video. But here's a photograph of some gall nuts. They're not generally this big. This is um, blown up. Gall nuts are created when an insect, a wasp, uh, burrows into the twig of an oak tree and lays its eggs inside. The larvae then uh, hatch, begin to consume the tree, which irritates it, and it creates these galls, almost like a fruit that hangs off the twig. Uh, that gall encapsulates the insect uh, which protects the tree from further damage uh, and also um, coincidentally protects the insect. The insect will then hatch, burrow itself out of the gall nut, fly away, mate, and the whole process uh, goes starts over again. The best galls for making iron gall ink are Aleppo galls. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Probably not. Uh, but Aleppo galls have a significant amount of tannic acid in them. Uh, tannins are uh, a compound found in plants, leaves, barks, uh, leaves, bark, nuts, uh, fruits. Tannins have been used for ages for tanning and dyeing of leathers and fabrics. It's also used in the uh, creation of iron gall ink. The way you create iron gall ink, or at least one of the recipes, uh, is you take uh, gall nuts and you ferment them, you break them and uh, break them into pieces and ferment them uh, in a bottle of water uh, for a period of time, about two months. I'm going to zoom in on this recipe here so you can uh, pause your screen and read that if you'd like. Uh, there you go. Uh, for a period of about two months you ferment these gall nuts and they'll get moldy and nasty and stinky uh, in a close in a closed jar with a little bit of um, a small hole to allow air to transfer. At the end of that time period you filter this through some kind of fabric or mesh to get all the nasties out. You boil what's left, add uh, the ferrous sulfate or the copperas, add the gum which is gum arabic which comes from an acacia tree. It's a sap type of substance that uh, is water soluble. It acts as a thickening agent as a, and as a binder. And then of course the water, you'll add enough water to bring you up to the original intended volume of water. And then I always add some kind of preservative, generally some cloves uh, and a little bit of phenol. The cloves I add uh, to mask the smell of the phenol, which some people don't like. Phenol is what's found in chloroseptic if you're wondering. It uh, is a great fun fungicide that is um, non-toxic. If you're interested in ordering either the paper that I'm going to show you or the ink, 
you can send an email. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to read that very well, but you can send an email to that email address right there. Order SN2 paper. That's O R D E R S N the number two paper at gmail.com. All right, so let's talk about these. I'm not sure which paper I have here, judging by the feel of it. I think that's copy paper, but we will find out very quickly. Let me grab my pen if you don't mind. First thing we'll put down is the stipula ink. I've got it in this syringe so I don't have to try to dip out of that little itty bitty ink sample vial on the film here and uh, spill all over my desk. That would be less than ideal. And I think I might want a little more because we're going to try to do a pretty thick flourish here. Yes, this is copy paper. So what you'll notice, of course, is tons of feathering and um, it acts a lot like a sponge as it just sucks the ink out of that, out of that nib. And uh, this fountain pen ink is not really designed to be used in this type of pen or on that type of paper. All right, just load that up a little bit more. Now let's try the other paper. This is, it will of course be uh, my SN2 paper. SN2, if you're wondering, stands for a sharp nib and smooth nib. I thought that was clever, but uh, I find a lot of people question what, uh, what that is. Uh, and this is also stipulated. So you'll, this is what I like so much about the SN2 papers, it takes ink so well, even ink that it uh, is very difficult to use on paper, normal papers, inexpensive papers especially. Okay, let's switch now to the Iron Gall. Iron Gall often will go down kind of a grayish look, and what happens is it oxidizes on the page and turns black in all but the thinnest of lines it will just be black as black can be kind of like noodler's um x feather or heart of darkness or something like that it's just a super black ink now i want you to notice how this ink excels on this cheap paper this is literally the, about as bad as it comes when it, as the paper is concerned anyway because uh, it's just cheap copy paper whatever was in my inkjet printer alright so whatever it is that's in fountain pen ink that causes it to flow well that causes it to um, uh, penetrate the, the paper to dry quickly etc all those additives are what causes it to perform so poorly on copy paper in addition, this is my my ideas anyway, I'm no student of ink. I've uh, got to expand that out again. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, the Iron Gall ink, however, has none of that. And so it it hangs on the page. The, the gum Arabic allows it to dry on the surface of the page, even though it will soak into the fibers, of course. Uh, there will be a texture to the ink when this is dry. If you rub it, you can feel the ink on the page. It's that gum arabic that's binding it on top. Also, the uh, the ink itself is going to bond, well, uh, I was going to say molecularly, and I think that's true, but we'll say chemically bond to the paper fibers. It is, to my knowledge, impossible to separate these two. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go and stick this paper as soon as it dries in the sink. We'll come back to it after water has run on it for a little while to show you what's happened uh, with both of these inks on this cheap copy paper in running water. I'm going to stop this video and go uh, put it under that water. We'll come back to it in a moment. While that's running under the water, I thought I would show you this. This is 
as you can read there, just some chicken scratching on my paper here, an experiment. So this was ink that on uh, February 16th, it's now the middle of June of the same year, 2015, I taped this page in an eastward facing window. Now I don't have a good southward facing window or window or I would have done that, but this is getting full sun about half the day and filtered sun the rest of the day. If you've ever hung any fountain pen paper in your window, or a fountain pen ink in your window, you'll find that most of it fades away. It loses its color or disappears almost entirely from the UV light. This looks, uh, to me, to be as good as the day I wrote it. Uh, this is w exactly why, uh, I mean, look how dark that is. This is exactly why uh, scribes, etc., um, from early periods use this ink. It's incredibly resistant to fading and damage from water, etc. And um, it's just a beautiful dark ink that allows you to, to draw a very fine line if your nibble allow for it. So uh, I thought that was interesting, an interesting experiment. And I'm going to leave it in the window uh, maybe for years. I don't know. I'm curious if it ever does fade. Let me go get that page out of the water. Okay, so as you can see, this paper uh, has a hole bore through it where the water was dripping. Let me bring that up closely so you can see. That stipula ink has uh, turned blue. All the black pigmentation is gone. If I was to hang that in the window, it would probably fade away almost to nothing. The uh, iron gall, you've got some ghosting around the sides here. That is essentially the ink that was floating on the surface of the page, dry or wet or otherwise. It's just not penetrated in. It's on the surface because of the gum arabic. And when it gets wet, it bleeds a little bit. But uh, as you can see, that is very, very black. I wonder what... I've never tried this before. Let's see what this will do. So there it is in its original color and um, it's not very different. This probably actually is a better way to show you that. I should have thought of that earlier. This paper, I've tried this before. I've, I've done something similar to this and stuck it to the wall in my shower and allowed it to dry and then take it and hung it in the window and um, is perfectly readable and maintains all of its qualities of being um, sunlight resistant or UV resistant. So in summary, iron gall ink is really interesting stuff. Uh, it's not, again, don't use it in fountain pens if I failed to mention that earlier. It's uh, not good for that, generally speaking. Uh, the binders, the gum arabic, and the, the corrosiveness of it makes it undesirable. But in a dip pen, uh, this is just a really fascinating ink. It uh, really only comes in black. I've seen some iron gull inks of other colors advertised, some purplishes and some bluishes. And uh, they certainly uh, are nice. I've tried them. But the old school historic recipes uh, are, to my knowledge, always black. And uh, just a lot of... So you don't have a lot of color variation. But... They are really fun to use, and they allow a uh, beginner dip pen user uh, to buy almost any paper they want. You can go to Staples and just buy a decent 32-pound copy paper and use iron gall ink till your heart's content on it. And, and uh, for practice paper, it'll work perfectly fine, as you can see, this cheapest stuff you can buy. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments about Iron Gall. If there's anything I've said that's incorrect and you want to correct that, uh, please do. And I hope you, each of you have a wonderful day and enjoy your uh, dip pen using.